Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video we're going to be talking about electric cars and the fact that people just aren't buying enough of them at this point. And so with all that being said, let's just pop right into the video. So let's dive into the fact that people aren't buying enough electric cars, and this obviously does not come uh, in support of what the uh, government is pushing and then also what uh, automakers are pushing as well. Uh, so right now there's a lot of initiatives to make it so that there is no longer going to be internal combustion cars in the next uh, decade or so, right? Uh, so like the big initiative right now is to have the average fuel economy rating uh, by 2026 to be around 50 miles per gallon for most automakers, meaning they have to adopt more electric uh, vehicles and then also hybrid vehicles as well. And then the other big initiative is by 2040, a lot of automakers have said that they will no longer sell any internal combustion engine cars whatsoever. Uh, but public buying habits do not support this uh, whatsoever. So there was a survey recently and it was done over several countries, but we're going to focus here on the uh, US. And in the uh, US version of the uh, survey, 69% of people said the next car they're going to buy is just going to be a regular gas powered car. That's it. And then 22% said that they would probably buy some sort of hybrid and only 5% said that they would buy a fully electric uh, vehicle. And so right now, right, buying is just not supporting uh, this push to go towards even hybrid technology, right? The majority of people are still wanting to just purchase regular uh, gas cars. And so uh, what that means really is that there has to be quite a few changes that happen from a legislation perspective, uh, but then also with automakers because, you know, you can't just push this on people and expect them to adopt it, right? That's just not what's happening uh, whatsoever. So there's a few things, uh, there's a few reasons why this is happening. So first off is battery technology right now. So battery technology just isn't uh, up to par with what people uh, need out of a vehicle. You see these pretty crazy range figures uh, rated uh, with these vehicles rated from the EPA where they'll say, oh, it has 300, 400 miles of range, but then the real world figures end up being significantly less. I have several friends that have Teslas that are rated for three, 400 miles of range. They get 200, 250, sometimes 300 miles of range, depending on the car and the range and everything. But the point that I'm trying to make is they don't get what the EPA rates the car at. And so a lot of people, because of the lack of range, because of where the battery technology is at right now, don't want to go fully electric. And the next thing is with charging times, right? Charging times are extremely long. Or if you want to have a relatively fast charging time, you have to pay quite a bit of money. And then it completely defeats the purpose of getting an electric vehicle because it's like, okay, well, if you want your car to be fully charged, it's, you know, like for example, this house has only 120 uh, volt outlets, right? And so if I wanted to fully charge an electric car, it would take several days. Even if you have 240s, uh, it still takes quite a bit of time to get a full charge in a car. Uh, you have the fast charging, but again, that costs a lot of money. And then if you're charging at your house, if you don't have solar or something like that, again, it's costing you money because your electric bill is going to go up. Uh, and so for a lot of people that completely, again, defeats the purpose of the electric car because they're constantly going to have anxiety about the range because the EPA figures aren't actually accurate with a lot of these vehicles. The charging times are extremely long. And then on top of that, they're not really saving money uh, because their electric bill is going to go up or if they're using fast charging or anything like that, it's almost as expensive as uh, a gas powered car. Um, right now with most of the fast charging versus even the overinflated prices of gas right now, uh, they're still about 60 to 70% of the price of fuel. So you're saving, you know, 30 to 40%, but you're not saving as much as you'd think, right? Because a lot of people, when they think of electric car, they think they're driving for free, but that's just uh, not reality, right? And then uh, the other part is just the price of the vehicles, right? So electric cars are pretty expensive. Uh, most people that buy an electric car expect to spend more money for that car than they do for a similar car that has a combustion engine. And so that's also kind of swaying uh, buyer habits because they're like, okay, well, I can buy this you know, combustion engine car for significantly less than this electric car. And on top of that, I'm gonna be spending about the same amount of money to fuel up that car as I am gonna be charging the electric car. I might save a little bit of money charging the electric car, but you're definitely not gonna save the price difference, right? Uh, with a lot of cars, you see like the combustion version and the fully electric version, and there's like a 10, sometimes 15,000, sometimes $20,000 price difference. And it's like, good luck you know, making up that difference with uh, charging and everything because it'll take quite a long time. And by the time that you actually maybe even slightly close the gap, you probably have already purchased another car. So it's completely uh, defeated it altogether. Uh, so that's another big thing. And then 
another big thing on the environmental side of things, like that's a lot. Of, that's a big reason why a lot of people are pushing for electric cars, right? It's for environmental reasons. Um, now, a lot of these electric car automakers have actually gone towards environmentally friendly ways to produce the cars, right? Like Tesla, for example, uh, a lot of their energy comes from solar and all this other stuff. And so uh, they actually, uh, when these electric cars get produced, they don't produce as much uh, greenhouse gases as they did in the past. But obviously, there's still some issues with the disposal of battery packs and all that kind of stuff. So that's another thing uh, for people that, you know, are conscious to the environment. They're like, well, this isn't really helping it out as much as I thought it would be, uh, especially the factories that still, you know, they don't, don't use solar or other sorts of renewable energy to produce the cars, right? There's that big kickback from there. Um, but then the other thing is the way that these cars are charged, right? It's not like you're not leaving a carbon footprint when you own an electric vehicle because most of our electricity is still produced via greenhouse gases, right? The burning of Utah, for example, the burning of coal produces a lot of our electricity here. And so if I go and buy an electric car and then I go and charge it at Tesla supercharging stations or at my house or whatever, I'm still, right? They still had to burn coal, which produce greenhouse gases to charge my car. So it's not like you're not leaving any sort of carbon footprint or anything like that. Um, so there's just a lot of reasons that are mounting up and pushing people uh, away from buying uh, these electric vehicles. And so uh, here's what I have to say has to happen. And uh, for obviously for people to adopt it a little bit more, but then also I think this is what needs to happen from a legislation perspective. So for people to adopt it more, right, we obviously need to have better range that's more reliable uh, in different sorts of weather conditions and everything. Because like with a gas powered car, if it's really hot outside or if it's really cold outside, there's a slight difference in your range, but it's not that massive. And electric cars need to, you know, implement some sort of technology uh, to basically close that gap. Tesla's done a pretty good job with that, but we still need a little bit more faster charging, obviously. Um, battery technology is pretty reliable, so that's not too big of an issue right now. And then obviously the way that the cars are produced and then also the uh, way that the energy for the cars is produced needs to change for more adoption of these vehicles. And on top of that, right, charging costs need to be brought down for more people to adopt it because if it's just as expensive uh, to basically, you know, quote unquote, fill up an electric car as it is to um, fill up a gas car, there's not going to be a point for people to buy that. Uh, so that needs to change as well. And then uh, on top of um, all of those changes that need to happen from a legislation perspective, the government needs to, needs to understand that, yes, they need to kind of, you know, obviously move things in a certain direction, but at the same time, they need to understand that things won't necessarily go as fast as they want them to go. And if you just implement legislation to try to force people to do things, there might be a lot of kickback and it might not happen the way that you want it. And so I think that we should probably have some legislation in place to kind of slowly push us uh, to be having more electric vehicles, more hybrid vehicles in the future. But I don't think that it should be as frenzied as it is right now, right? I think that the average fuel economy rating of over 50 miles per gallon is, it's a little bit excessive, right? It's a lot. Uh, so I think that maybe pulling back a little bit with that uh, would be a good idea. And like I said, setting standards, but making sure the standards are realistically achievable and that you know consumers are actually going to adopt them. Uh, but that's gonna sum things up for today's video. I want you guys to let me know what you think about this whole uh, topic. And yeah, I'll see all of you in the next video.